It's every time you've said the best one is the... I can't believe it! This is the most expensive guitar I've ever owned, and these are the most expensive pickups I've ever owned. And this isn't. These are £90 pickups, and there's no way these can sound better than that. Is there? Now to test these pickups, we did a few tests. So we did some blindfolded shootouts against a Gibson Les Paul Standard with Burst Buckers 1 and 2, and Monty's guitar pickups, which are a Retro Wind and a Full Monty, which in my head are my favorite pickups ever. And some Tone Rider AC2 Classics, which are a 90 pound set of PAFs. Why do we choose these pickups? Well, these are PAF spec pickups. So these are Aulico 2, 7.5K ohms in the neck, 8.3K ohms in the bridge, and the Burst Buckers, they're Aulico 2 as well. Again, PAF spec, similar outputs. And the Montes, I think they're a tiny bit hotter, and I think they're Aulico 5 or Aulico 2 and 5. They're all within the PAF spec. What is a PAF? It is a low output humbucker. Normally about between 7.5 and 9K output with probably an Alnico 2 or an Alnico 5, but when they've actually looked into what pickups are in these old things, Alnico 3, 4, 5, 2, and winds anywhere between like 7 and 9K, because pickup winders weren't calibrated to stop at a certain point. It was just, you know, you went to the toilet, came back and went, yeah, that'll probably do. The first test, we strummed the G chord on all three guitars. I will blur out the guitar so you can hear what you hear and comment, let me know what you think. Why am I blindfolded? <laughs> How about we just have a G chord on each? Yeah. First guitar you played first of all, both times you said was your favourite, and that was the Les Paul. The Gibbo. The middle one. The one before. Right. There's a pretty consistent response to what you've said so far. Oh, f Which is every time you've said the best one is the Gibson Les Paul. Oh! <laughs> okay. To make it a bit more exciting, we also picked some notes, which changed the result entirely. What I can tell you is that on the pickiness, you preferred the ghost fret. Did I? I mean, the the last one was that one, which you said was nice, but you preferred the second one, which was that one both times. <laughs> I thought that was my Les Paul. The Les Paul was the first lot round, just to play in the G chord, and the second lot was the ghost fret. So which goes again to show that playing just a very little amount doesn't necessarily mean anything. During all these tests, Steve made the outrageous boast that he would be able to tell what pickups they were easily. It's so difficult though. We're going to have to do it with you blindfolded because you'll be like, they sound the same. I'll be able to tell you exactly which one it is on every single one. Nah. I didn't realise he was actually being sarcastic because I was blindfolded, but you know, we gave it a go anyway. Right, let me just plug in this Telecaster. <laughs> Stratocaster. I think that was your Les Paul Gibbo. Right, I think that one is actually the green Les Paul. 
I think this, the one before that was actually the Les Paul still, so the first one must have been. Actually, is it? Uh, yeah, the first one was the Explorer. Les Paul second, then the green one. <laughs> I think I might be right. I think that might be the green one. Cool. And it had the same quackiness, but a little bit darker. Nah, it's not. This is the Les Paul. Oh, f you. Tell you what, these AC2s, 90 pounds. Yeah, but um, since I've put them in, my God, do I like playing that guitar more. Yeah. Oh, it's Yeah, having a so nice, nice set of any pickups always makes you want to play more. Yeah. Why paths? Well, because they're a lower output humbucker, you get a lot more clarity, which is especially obvious on the neck when there's a little bit of drive. When it comes to the neck pickup in particular, I like it to be really clear. So yeah. we always we always mention about humbuckers in the neck being muddy. Well, the pathy, so this should be. <clears> the yeah, and they, that was especially um, during the picking stuff. That was quite nice and bright. But also, when it's driven, you get a lot more clarity. It just goes to show that money doesn't always make a pickup. Now one of the other nuances about PAFs is that each bobbin was not matched equally. So what I mean is, say this was an 8k ohms humbucker, well each bobbin would probably be 4 ohms each side. Well that wasn't the case in old PAFs, you could have like 3k and 5k because just the, how the winder worked. So the guys at Tone Rider are actually experimenting with mismatched bobbins at the moment and also different strength magnets, so not as strong. Some older magnets were not super powerful. So. There's going to be some interesting stuff in the works. I'm more impressed with Tone Riders. <laughs> yeah, I do. Like, I've got the Tone Rider in my uh, Les Paul, the P90, and it's great. It's my favourite neck P90 pickup I've ever had. We've tried a few Tone Rider pickups and always been impressed. And check out this video on the P90s that my friend Steve put in his Epiphone Les Paul. They sound incredible. Again, like 80 or 90 pounds for a set of pickups. They just sound amazing. Absolutely amazing. Thanks for watching.